Hello, my name is Joe Renato, and I'm seated before an American photo player. This is a modified Style 20. Uh, they made several models, uh, this being one of the smallest with a single cabinet. The largest known was a Style 50, which had two cabinets and was about 22 feet long. This is about 10 feet wide. Uh, what a photo player does is it made the music, or the sound, shall we say, for silent films. Uh, they were first created about 1910 by the Van Valkenburg brothers in Oakland. And uh, it consists of a player piano with two spool boxes. This being the tracker bar and a spool here and another tracker bar and a spool here. That's so you can cue up two rolls. One roll is playing while one, let's say, is rewinding so you can cue up music for the next scene in the film. That way keeping the, the music fairly accurate to match the action. Now, the reason they used piano rolls instead of having a person come in and play by hand, which you of course could do with this machine, the piano rolls freed up the artist's hands to pull the pull cords, program the organ and the orchestral effects, push buttons to activate sound effects and pedals, buttons, pulls, knobs, all kinds of things to add sound effects and orchestral effects to the silent film. These were usually in the orchestra pit just under the screen. They never were really much taller than five feet, low profile, so uh, they weren't in the way of the screen. And the operator had to know the film, of course. He would make a cue sheet and then he would draw off rolls that would match the screen action. Usually with a stopwatch he would time things out. Now, I'll go through and demonstrate how this uh, contraption works. Let's start with the pull cords. First one being a chime. Now that could either be a, a gong, a fire gong, it could be a fight bell, a chime, or somebody getting hit on the head. Now the next one is locomotive. You could do a train. effect, or the Curly Howard effect as some people affectionately call it. Tom for Indian music. And then a gunshot. We have here a bulb horn for early automobiles. And on the console, we also have a klaxon horn, an electric klaxon. So you can have two cars coming to, toward each other. For a traffic scene, it just kind of mixes it up a little bit. Starting on the right, we have a cowbell, a la Spike Jones, and then a telephone bell or doorbell, snare drum, single strike or repeating. How about the horse's hooves? Or somebody knocking on a door. We got castanets for. Uh, Spanish type of film. Tambourine for those gypsy scenes. And of course, you heard the klaxon, and then we have a triangle. Down on the slip key, we have here a bird whistle, sleigh bells. And there are some pedals down here. The first one being a police siren or fire siren. The reissue of the snare here and another bass and cymbal over here, another pedal with a bass and cymbal attached. So the operator could actually play by hand and use his feet to play the traps. This is sustain for uh, sustaining the piano, making it louder, some people call it, and soft pedal for the piano. And then this one is thunder, or timpani roll. 
Now, up here we have these tabs. These are for the organ. Now you have a piano, of course. Now, you want to hear a principal pipe. That's a principal. Flute. Violin. Tuba. A tuba has a distinct sound. You'd use it for chase, uh, chase rolls or for, let's say, scenes of pomp and circumstance in a church or uh, coronations and things. The flute is a very, has a very uh, interesting sound, a very nice sound, as well as the violin. What the principal does, principal is like adding salt to a meal. It enhances the sound of any of the instruments that you're trying to play. So let's say a principal has kind of a neutral tone to it. So let's say you want to make the flute louder, you turn on the principal. You want to, you want to make the violin louder, you turn on the principal. So that's what a principal does, it kind of backs up the instruments. Now down here we have in the bass register an eight foot principal. And a 16 foot flute. And coupled together. So as you can see, it can be played by hand right off the keyboard. Now this is called a tremolo. What a tremolo does is it causes the air to bounce in the line between the blower and the pipes, giving a very interesting uh, etherical sound. Kind of like a Hammond organ without the electricity. Now, you also have xylophone. So, with all of this, there's also a muffler in the middle here which actually turns the piano off so the organ is more, uh, has a little more of, uh, of, a, of a neutral sound, a, a solo sound. And the mandolin, of course, which gives the ticky-tack sound of a, like a barroom scene. With all of this and piano rolls playing, the picture on the screen, you kind of are kept pretty busy. <laughs> and of course, these could be used in vaudeville houses. Uh, they could play uh, intermission. Uh, there's an article I read where this one theater called the Muse Theater in Omaha, Nebraska bought a style 50 American photo player. And the ad, the opening night ad said, come here our 12 piece orchestra, play the, um, uh, the feature and listen to the photo player play the shorts, in other words the comedy shorts and intermission, which gave the musicians a break. So that's interesting. They, they went hand in hand. And of course the piano could have been used for either the photo player or the orchestra. It was very versatile. So thanks to the Van Valkenburgs, we have these machines. They made about 4,500 of them from the kinetic blower records. We found uh, research has been that there were about 4,500 kinetic blowers sold to American photo players. We figure since the kinetic blowers were used with photo players exclusively, about 4,500 of these were built. Sadly, only about 51 survive, a little over 1%. And um, only about eight or nine play, which is a very sad thing. Um, so, soon the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences hopefully will have one. Um, and uh, it'll be one of the first to be in a public venue. So, these are wonderful machines. Everybody copied them. Uh, Worldster came out with its photo players, Seabird, Link, Cremona, all made photo players. But from what research I have done, it looks like the Van Valkenburgs were the first from their little piano shop in Oakland in 1910. The logo on the front of the American photo player is spelled with an F, photo player. That's because they took the word photo player, P-H-O-T-O-P-L-A-Y-E-R, and morphed it into their logo with an F. As you can see down here, the name of the machine is Photo Player, but the generic term is Photo Player Company because photo players were the machines that were created 
to play for photo plays. Motion pictures were registered as moving photographs. They were called photo plays. So, since this is a player piano, and it plays for photo plays, photo player was a natural. Do I get my dollar now? 